Okay, you've taken the delivery of your Invictus Active Trainer. Let's open the box and see what's inside. Having unpacked the box, you should find the following items. The trainer, a pair of ramps, a ratchet strap. If you've purchased the Smart, it will also include the speed sensor, the Smart Plus, which will also include the heart monitor, the phone stand, the phone holder. You may have also purchased the wheel spin DVD. Also when you open the box you'll find attached to the trainer a set of washers. You need to keep these washers put them to one side for the moment. We have a separate video that explains how these washers are used to adjust your camber and also to adjust any problems that you're having with wheelchair travel. In addition to this video instruction, if you visit our website, you'll also see there's some written instructions which you can also follow. Okay Glenn, I've unpacked the box and checking what items are in there. The first thing you need to do is to remove the two sets of washers which are on the trainer. So if you just snip those off with some scissors for me. That's great. And you'll also find a set on the bottom. That's great. As I said previously in the instructions, you don't need those washers at the moment, but put them safely to one side because we'll, you, we'll use them in a separate video a little later on. Okay Glenn, I've removed the washers. Next thing you want to do is to lay the trainer flat on the floor. That's great. And then just open it up so that the two arms are open flat on the floor. Then if you can just slide the two cardboard tubes off the ends of the brakes, put those to one side, it's just packing, you won't need that anymore. I've now opened the trainer in, the next thing we're going to do is fit the cabina. To do this we need to identify the front of the trainer. This is recognisable because there's a bar at the front and no bar at the back. The next thing we want to do is to check that all feet are fairly square and sat on the floor. We then want to tighten up the four thumb nuts, which is the two at the front and the two at the back. So first up, let's fit the cabina to the front of the trainer. Okay, so if you just unscrew the thumb nut on the cabina, and then attach the cabina through the hole up the front of the trainer. Tighten up the thumb nut so it's nice and secure. That's great. Next thing we're going to do, Glenn, is tighten up the four thumb nuts on the trainer. So that's the two at the front you need to tighten. Nice and tight. And then if we wheel round the back, just tighten the two up around the back of the trainer. Again, as tight as you can with your thumb, that's brilliant, thank you. Now the last thing you want to do before you put the ramps on is just check that all feet are level and flat on the floor. If you look around the train, you'll see that at the moment not all eight feet are touching the floor correctly. So just square the feet up and push the trainer down towards the floor. If you purchase the smart model, it'll include the speed sensor. So you first need to remove this from the box. Have we removed the sensor from the box? We need to locate it on the trainer, which is quite simple. We just locate into these two holes here. If you whittle the sensor, that's it. You'll find it'll drop through a set of holes in the bottom. Having located the sensor on there, the next thing that we need to do is just rotate the bar. And you'll see a magnet. We need to position that magnet so that the sensors between three and six millimeters away from the magnet. To adjust the sensor all we do is rock it backwards and forwards like that. Okay 
Okay, so the final part of the process now is putting the ramps on there. So all you need to do is grab a pair of ramps then. When you're putting the ramps on there, Glenn, the long side of the ramp needs to go on the outside of the train. And the other way of identifying that, if you look on the outside of that ramp, you'll see a sticker. And if you look on the outside of the trainer, you'll also see a sticker. The two stickers have to line up. The ramp has to sit level with the two black spacers on the roller. Position the ramp so it sits over the thumb nut. Okay, Glenn, your train has now assembled. Just need to explain the operating of the brakes to you. The brakes work in two positions. Currently, though, the brakes are off. Off is when the brakes pushed all the way forward and sat on the stop on the outside. And if we want to put the brake on, which I'm going to ask you to do now, pull the brake lever all the way up and you'll feel it stop. That's the brake on. Before we get on the trainer, we need to ensure both brakes are in the on position. And I'll ask you now, Glenn, for the first time to wheel onto the trainer. Just before you do that, the one thing I'll ask you to do is the ratchet strap which we've attached, can you make sure that's placed in a convenient position that you can reach once you've got yourself on the train? If you position yourself at the bottom of the ramp, facing forwards, that's great. Get your wheels in the centre of the two ramps. Get your balance and then just wheel straight up the ramps into the rollers. Great. Now that you're on there, Glenn, the ratchet strap that you've positioned by your feet, you can just pick that up. Okay. And underneath your seat, at the front, you'll, you'll find the bar, which is underneath your seat. That's great. Always make sure you attach it at the bar at the front and not the axle bar, which is at the back. So it's the front bar, which is under the seat tray. And all that I need you to do now is take that one rope you've got your hand and pull that nice and tight. That's great. And that's now secured you for the train to the trainer so you can't go backwards. Now you're on there nice and secure. I need you to take the two brakes off. So if you just reach down for the one brake and push it forward, that's great. And the same with the other brake, that's great. First time on there, so I just want you to get a feel for it. Just get yourself a nice comfortable position and do a couple of pushes. Okay, Glenn, I've been watching you push for the last couple of minutes. I've noticed that your left hand wheel is behaving the way I'd expect it to, and you get about one revolution per push. But your right hand wheel is hardly rotating. As soon as you let go of it, it pretty much stops. I'm willing to bet that's tyre pressure. So we'll get you off in a minute, and we'll measure tyre pressure, and I'm willing to bet that the tyre pressure is considerably lower in that right hand tyre. In fact, I think the left one should spin a bit better, so we'll blow, blow them both up. Do you know what pressure your tyre should be at then? Um, up to 10 bar, which is 145. Okay, great. Well, let's get off and we'll check that out. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is to put both brakes back on, so put them in the full upright position. Okay, now the next important thing to do before you try to wheel off is to remove your ratchet strap. To do that, if you reach under your seat, You'll feel on the back of the ratchet strap there's a little pin. If you push that pin down, it'll slacken off one of the ropes, and then you remove the ratchet strap. That's great then. When you wheel off, can I ask you to make sure you don't put down the ramps in, in, in the way of your wheeling off? Could you put it on the floor out of the way? That's great. Now, because you're coming off for the first time, you wheel forward and you'll feel the rollers lock onto the brakes. That's great. What I want you to do now is keep a constant pressure on your wheels 
push as if you're going down a, a small drop on a curve. So do that and just push forward. That's great. Okay, Glenn, it's good I can see you're running on Mountain Pluses. Those are good for 145 PSI. So what we'll do, we'll blow that up to 140 now. Okay, Glenn, having blown the tyres up to 140 PSI, which is where they should be, and you can see there you're getting a lot more revolution for push. Yeah. And encouragingly, as I suspected, the right wheel's also actually now uh, rolling as well as the left one. Okay Glenn, so now we've blown the Marathon Pluses up to 140 PSI. Hopefully you can feel a bit of a difference now you're pushing on the trailer. When we talk about high pressure tyres, we're talking about tyres that are operating in excess of 100 PSI. Anything below that we don't consider to be an high pressure tyre. I know some people push on tyres of 70 and 80 PSI. I personally don't push on a tyre that's less than 130 PSI because of the additional load that it puts on the shoulders. Okay, having spoke about the difference with Lex running your tyres at high pressure, the one thing that I'd recommend you completely avoid are solid tyres. I've used solid tyres in the past and for me it feels like I'm constantly pushing on the flat tyre so I'll always endorse the pneumatic tyres, always the high pressure. I personally uh, like pushing on marathon pluses. Okay Glenn, you set your trainer up and the way that we set your trainer up is a smart unit which includes a speed sensor. The other option you have is to purchase a smart plus which includes the heart rate monitor and the phone holder and the phone stand. To assemble the phone stand, that's quite simple. You take the stand, simply insert the holder, like that. You've got the telescopic, which is on the, the holder. And to lock it off, all you do is turn it like that, which locks the stand off. You've also got a box which has got your heart rate monitoring, so just remove this from the box and remove it from the box. All you do is click down the one side of the strap, remove the plastic tab. Then I'm going to ask you to put this around your chest, Glenn. Okay, again, so you've put the heart rate monitor on. We've downloaded the app onto your phone, which we cover in a different video showing you how to install it on your phone. Now it's installed on your phone, you can download a variety of workout and training programs. It's capable of recording your speed, your distance, and your calorie burn, as well as your heart rate. Having set that up and you doing your first workout, what we recommend people to do on your first workout is target a five minute push and maintain three miles an hour for the five minutes. I know that doesn't sound a lot, but if you're an average wheelchair user, that should be quite a challenge for your first time on the trainer. So let's do a five minute push at three mile an hour. If you push, you'll see on there that it'll record your speed. If you can keep that speed at three mile an hour, just a little bit quicker. That's great. And just try and hold that pace for a five minute period if you can. Okay, Glenn, that's fantastic. First go, five minutes at three miles an hour, well done. What I'll ask you to do now is just slow the pace down. I want you to lower your heart rate. So we're going to do a bit of a cool down now. One of the things I'm going to ask you to do um, when you lower your heart rate a little is to wheel backwards. I always like to do that after a workout. Okay, 
That's important because you're using a totally different muscle group than the one that you've been using during the workout. And when wheelchair users tend to develop shoulder injury, it's through constant use of the same muscles. It's not very often you get the chance to wheel backwards in a wheelchair. And this is a great opportunity now to use a totally different set of muscle groups than the ones you normally use when you're pushing forwards. I feel that's on my own. Okay, that's great. So, having completed your cool down and roll backwards, I'd like you to do now to get off the train. That's great. Great for the first workout. That was excellent. The one thing we didn't cover in that, but it's in a separate video. If you wanted more or less spin on your wheels, i.e., a little more or a little less resistance, we can do that by altering the camber you can see in a separate video. The other thing we didn't cover in that video, because you weren't having a problem with it, is wheelchair travel. Some people that use a trainer will travel left or right on the trainer, and again, we cover, we cover in a separate video why that happens and how to prevent that happening in the future.